Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our live edition of our podcast of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. I have a very special treat for you guys today. Uh, not only do I have an absolute rock star mortgage professional in your community who's about to share her story, but we're about to share something that I think will connect with a lot of your hearts and minds. A lot of you who have uh, been in this game for either a short season or a long season, I think we'll get a lot of inspiration from this because this is really about a story about someone who had this desire in their heart to do something great in her business and was slugging through the mud with concrete blocks on her feet, doing it the hard way. <laughs> and I, something tells me several of you can relate to that intimately. And this is a story about someone on the front lines of capitalism in the real world trying to make the dream real and was really spinning her wheels and found a way to create traction to make magic happen and to create a 40% increase in her purchase production in just three short months. So a massive uh, and significant breakthrough in results. So today we're gonna share with you how Debbie Knight increased her production, her purchase production to be very specific, not just refis, not just riding the high tide of the refi boom, but increased her purchase business by 40% in just three months. So super stoked, delighted, and excited to share this story with you. And it's just so grateful to have you with us today, Debbie. Thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Hey, my pleasure. So let's dive in. Why don't we just start off with share a little bit about your background, how long you've been in the mortgage business for, and uh, what got you in this crazy profession, this crazy industry? Why don't we start there? Sounds great. So I actually spent 28 years in banking and I decided um, last year that I really wanted to challenge myself and do something new. I really wanted to launch a second career and I really wanted to be in the driver's seat of that career. So um, I wanted to have that opportunity to build my business. So um, a lot of my friends encouraged me to try the mortgage business because I've actually I've referred customers to the mortgage side for my 30 years in banking. So I uh, got to work with great mortgage professionals, but also realtors and title companies. And so uh, about eight months ago, I took the dive and I decided to go into the mortgage business um, during the coronavirus. <laughs> My timing was perfect. So uh, timing, right? yeah, yeah. So launched it at a great time, but I've had the best time and I've learned so much from you. Um, and from the team uh, of professionals around you. So it's been great. Yeah. So talk about taking the leap and drawing wings from the way down, uh, jumping from the nest, so to speak, and growing wings on the way down. And uh, obviously a very different scenario being in the banking world versus 100% commission, you eat what you kill with no safety net. And, uh, you know, instead of just having leads fed to you like the lazy bear inside the zoo waiting for the mm -hmm. meat over the fence. You're like now all of a sudden overnight, the Kodiak grizzly hunting in the wild. <laughs> you know, you, you kill. Very different scenario in more ways than one. And I know yeah. several people, if not all the people listening and watching can relate to that. It's scary and exciting at the same time. But hey, yeah. when you have a dream and you're committed to it, you know, and you're in it to win it, you do whatever it takes. And so here you are eight months later. Uh, let's rewind the tape a little bit. Let's go back to the plight, the pain, the the struggle the stress of you being on the front lines trying to you know make this thing work without knowing how to get those quality leads not knowing how to get those quality partners and just kind of throwing yogurt to the fan hoping something sticks being unequipped and ill-equipped i liken it to like heading mm -hmm. in the wilderness unarmed and naked just you know <laughs> for the best it, it tends not to bode well why don't we uh start there maybe just share a little bit about the pain of the struggle uh, when you're living in uh, Struggle City before you moved to Planet Prosper with us. Take us back. Yeah. What was that like? What was the most uh, potently painful uh, part of that for you? And what was the the most um, stressful part about that for you? Well, and I think joining uh, the mortgage business at the time that the refi boom was going on, you kind of uh, get in a plateau like this is going to be forever. You know, this is great. I, you know. So I had a lot of people say, oh, great, I'm going to send you my refi. Um, but then when they didn't send those refis and then you start looking at your production, 
um, and you start wondering where that next lead's going to come from, where that next loan's going to come from. And uh, it is, it's scary because, you know, I'm a single parent and uh, my income is what we live on. And so there are days that for sure I was, you know, kind of crossing my fingers and my son would come to me, he goes, did you get a loan today? And I'm like, no. <laughs> you know? I'll and, let you know when I get one, okay, son? Yeah, yeah. Stop well, asking yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah, like when you're taking a road trip, it's like, are we there yet? Yeah. No, yeah. I got to tell you, right? No, I don't have a freaking loan yet, son. <laughs> exactly. And so I had a big L on my head every time I said, no, you know. Uh, and so I started kind of going through the paces of um, how can I do this better? How can I do this smarter? And just started kind of researching because I didn't want to spend my wills for a long, long time knowing my money wasn't going to last a long, long time. Um, you know, you we all have that seed, uh, that savings that's going to cover you for a certain amount of time. Um, right. But I knew that was not going to be forever. So uh, definitely wanted to uh, kind of choose a path that was proven um, and not try to do it myself. Um, I didn't want to throw things at the wall and hope something, you know, stuck up there. So I was very committed. Um, and I, when I uh, chose to go into mortgage, I'm a firm believer in myself. So I do have a strong belief in my skill set, my personality and my willingness to do well. Um, but I also felt that, um, you know, there's people out there that are very successful and I feel like that's who I want to learn from. Yeah, and you very much are in sync with our ideal client profile of someone who's intelligent enough to know it's going to be a lot more expensive learning from your own mistakes, stepping on your own landmines, getting your limbs knocked off versus learning from an expert. So you can avoid those landmines and avoid all the casualties and all the drama and trauma of doing it the hard way. So, you know, yeah. from the very beginning, you were in it to win it. From the very beginning, you had that, uh, you know, insurmountable, unstoppable desire to succeed. But again, it doesn't, doesn't matter how defiantly committed we are to success. If we're heading east looking for the sunset, we got a problem. So yeah. take it back there for a moment. What was the uh, the dark the darkest um, stress, the darkest fear you had when you were still in that place of not knowing how to crack the code, not knowing how to attract the right partners, not knowing how to best use your time, not knowing how to uh, make the cash register ring and you're on 100% commission. Take us back to that. What was for you your biggest fear, your biggest concern in that dark season? You know, so I wrote a list of names down of people that I've known for years and I started calling them and the thing that I would hear from them is we'll keep your contact information. We'll keep your contact information. We'll keep your contact information. Right. And so that wasn't what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear that um, they had a transaction for me or they knew somebody who had a transaction for me. And so as I was going through that list and hearing the same thing, that was very worrisome. Mm -hmm. um, and, I talked to a mortgage professional here in Little Rock and they were like, you know, you don't have a chance to make a mistake. I mean, if you make a mistake, your reputation's gone. And I'm just like, <laughs> no, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> exactly. That's horrifying to me. Uh, thanks for your help. And uh, so all of that was going through my mind. And so the self doubt, did I make the right decision? Um, all started coming at me and, you know, I knew I was going to get in that turtle shell um, soon because just kind of that protective mode of not wanting to be told no anymore and just struggling to put one foot forward, kind of uh, not even wanting to open up my computer because I knew what it was going to say. Um, so I was kind of, you know, trying to push back from building my business just because I was scared to do that. Yeah. And, you know, it's so easy on the outside looking in for someone who's never been on the front lines on 100 percent commission. They've never taken that leap from the nest of punching a clock and having that consistent salary. It, it's so easy to look at it and say, yeah, you know, I can 
I can kind of appreciate what that would be like, but you know, they can't really fully connect to the fear and the sleepless nights and the stress of that until you've actually lived it, breathed it and got your proverbial nuts or ovaries kicked in a few times (laughs) on the front lines of your life. Exactly. Right. Right. So here you are now, you've got, you know, plenty of acumen expertise, experience in, in banking and finance, you know, no shortage of that. Um, and that helped you quite a bit in the beginning, you know, you got off to a decent start, yeah. uh, and yet there was still a bit of a foreboding sense of how long is this gravy train going to last and worrying where that next deal is going to come from. What percentage of your business do you think was uh, refi versus purchase before you reached out to us? If you can rela- recollect to some degree. 95% was refi. Okay. So 95% and you were doing relatively well. You were definitely uh, taking advantage of what mm-hmm. we call, uh, you know, the mortgage gold rush with this crazy refi boom, crazy historically low rates. And, you know, that's great. But, mm-hmm. you know, when you are sitting on a one legged stool, running yeah. a one trick pony, it gets rather foreboding when you realize that, you know, you're in a rather precarious position. And as soon as rates go up, you're yeah. about to fall off that stool and it's going to be a hard blow to the ground. Tell us a little bit about that in terms of the uh, the sense that you were making progress, but, you know, that foreboding sense of what's to come. Speak to that a little bit if you could. Yeah. So it was definitely a false sense of security, right? So um, having that first couple of months where I was doing eight or nine refi deals and one purchase deal, um, you were kind of building up this false level of security, like this is going to go on forever. And then when they were starting to say, okay, the rates are going to go up and, you know, and I started seeing the pipeline uh, start to dwindle for the refis. Um, And I did start to worry about my production because I was 95% refi. I was only doing one purchase, maybe a month, maybe. There were some months that I was 100% refi. Um, And so definitely I knew those numbers had to flop and had no idea how to do that. And the crazy thing is I know a lot of realtors, but you know, you just getting into the job, you're you're not feeling all that confident too in trying to approach them and they're not all that confident in you (laughs) trying to refer to you yet. So it was kind of that double-edged sword. Um, But yeah, I had built up a false sense of security with those refos, Um, knew I was gonna have to flip that um scenario to you know at least 75 purchase 15 percent refi if not even higher uh, so my goal is really to be at 85 15 um because i think that that's the smarter area to be in um so that you're not so dependent on that business that's very rate sensitive and yeah. uh, so Absolutely. And I know many, many listening and watching can relate to the precarious position you were in because many people even watching and listening right now are still in that precarious position of sitting on that one legged stool. And it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when those yes. rates go up and all of a sudden your refi business dries up overnight. And if you're relying 50, 60, 70, 80 percent plus on refis, that's a yeah. um, kick in the proverbial nuts when it comes right. to uh, a significant financial haircut. So, you know, we don't want to be caught with our proverbial pants down, unequipped and ill-equipped, <laughs> scrambling to try and recoup that lost revenue. We want to be uh, preemptively, proactively prepared. And uh, that's a big reason why people reach out to us is to be able to do that in an elegant, simple, powerful way that allows us to be in control in the driver's seat. So instead of right. chasing and, you know, offering the same old best rates, great, great service and great rates, throw me a bone type of scenario where we're at the effect of the whim and motivation of a realtor, we're flipping the scripts so that they need us more than, you know, we need them. And it's a whole different shift dynamic and energetically. Right. Yeah. Uh, by the way, do you happen to have a pooch that uh, is wanting to get let out to go pee or, or what am I hearing in the background there? I thought I heard like someone, someone whining or something in the background. It sounds like my dog yeah. whining at the door. <laughs> yeah. So I have a French bulldog and he just whines because he wants uh, up on the bed or near me. So yeah. yeah, he's. Why don't you grab him and show him off on the camera just so we know who's the, who's, who's the whiner, who's the site supervisor. Oh. <laughs> we gotta find out who the site supervisor is. 
keeping you in line. Yes. She's whining, trying to keep you in line. Oh, there we go. There's a little sweetheart. Look at that face. <laughs> Who couldn't love a face like that? that I is, know. She is just scrumptious. <laughs> Look at that beautiful bulldog face. Oh. Anybody, anybody who loves bulldogs, they're they're just grinning from ear to ear right now. <laughs> yeah, Can't I'm a little scrumptious. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, now, now you know you have full license to put her back on the lap if necessary. Yeah. <laughs> she got her dose. She, she got did. her dose. She might need another one. You know, we'll see you if she have. needs to be in line again, right? We'll exactly. see how the whining goes. <laughs> He's so, looking at the show. So let's talk about behind the curtain, behind the, you know, trying to be – in your composed self, because like when you're on the front lines and you're trying to provide and you're, you're, you're trying to put food on the table for the, for the youngsters. And, you know, you're talking to the realtors and you're talking to the mortgage pros. Generally speaking, we try to kind of keep our act together. Generally, we don't really share our vulnerabilities. We don't share our fears. We try to, you know, keep it all inside and suppress it for the most part. Right. We don't, don't want to come across as a whiner or a complainer or a negative Nelly. And I think there's, chances are for most people, there's a lot of benefit in that in many many cases and scenarios. Uh, and yet this is different. This is a podcast where we're sharing real life on the front lines. Mm -hmm. So let's just peel back the curtain and get real on a real vulnerable level. What was your you know, secret motivation to stepping up and making this business work that had you getting out of bed in the morning, sometimes when you didn't feel like it, that had you working longer and harder than you really felt like, that had you stretching out of your comfort zone when you didn't feel like it, when you weren't in the mood, that had you doing all the things you were doing before you met me, before you came to Planet Prosper, you were <laughs> in it to win it, you were grinding, you were hustling, you were doing all in your power. And most of those days, you probably were not in the mood, but you did it anyways. Right. What, what was it that was that fire in your belly that had you just so committed to being successful in this, in this business? Well, failure is not a word that I listen to, or it's not in my vocabulary. So that wasn't going to happen. Uh, and I knew that if I had the right tools, I could be successful. Um, and I had to have the right mindset to do that. And um, I chose to invest in myself early on when I said, hey, this is what you're going to do. You're going to grow your own business. You're going to be dedicated to this. Um, and I knew it wasn't without challenges. It was There was going to be the good times and the not so good times um, where I would have to tell my son I didn't get along today or or even tomorrow or the next day. So um, yeah, but it was it was some scary times and I did have to force myself to open that computer and to do that call list that I was talking about, to make those calls, to let people know I was in the business, to you know give me a chance and I'm gonna take care of your customer. I'm gonna keep you um, involved in that transaction. I always knew I was gonna do a gift and I certainly have done gifts at the end um, and did like little thank yous throughout. Um, but it just wasn't uh, a well-oiled plan. Um, it was more haphazard in that, you know, I was still trying to see what worked. Um, but yeah, I knew putting one foot in front of the other, I had to do that. Uh, so I did that. But scary times, for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, being a mom and, be, you know, raising your son on your own you had high stakes failure was not an option telling your son hey i can't afford to put food on the table or provide was not an option so you had the mama bear instinct in your yes. in working in your favor so to speak uh, we'll often do more for others than we will for ourselves yes. so there's a superpower in knowing this isn't just about us this is about providing and, and fulfilling a mission critical role as provider right. Um, and so, you know, having that hard stop where failure was not an option, it's either win or freaking die. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there is absolute power in that as long as we can channel that defiant resolve towards, you know, heading west looking for the sense, sunset to the east, right? Yes. And so, it was more difficult because I couldn't 
even have dinners or lunches or coffee or cocktails with any of these people. And when you're doing that, connections form more, uh, you know, easily. And since the pandemic, we weren't able to do that. So, uh, so all of these connections were made harder because you're trying to do it on Zoom or FaceTime or, you know, and building those connections are easier one-on-one. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so. so you had your wings tied uh, on a couple respects. One is you didn't have a plan. You didn't have a formula. You didn't have a recipe. You didn't have a roadmap to begin with. So you're just going out there, like we call it, throwing yogurt yeah. in the fan, hoping something sticks, right? Right. And in conjunction with that, you had your wings tied because of COVID quarantine and all the restrictions. And you can't meet with people face to face and people don't want to meet face to face and all these all these uh you know limiting factors so you you were you know doubly screwed blued and tattooed when it comes to getting your business <laughs> off the ground. and here you are now trying to do all these things that people are telling you to do tell us about some of the methods you were being told to do that maybe worked back in the day before COVID, or maybe worked 10 15 20 years ago but you know weren't working at the level you needed to maybe just highlight some of the key strategies you were being told to do that weren't panning out for you? Um, the proverbial cold calling, uh, right. which which is painful um, and not fun and typically doesn't give you the results that you want anyway, um, because you're rambling. You don't know really what to say and uh, um, that call's not scripted as it should be. So cold calling was one for sure. Um, using my contacts with title companies and um, uh, different kind of closing agents and abstract companies. Um, and, you know, basically begging realtors uh, and, you know, <laughs> realtors uh, already had a group of people they were working with. And so if I didn't bring something to the table, I knew I wasn't going to be able to sway a realtor from somebody that they're comfortable working with that, you know, perhaps everything was still going okay. Um, so if I didn't have any anything to offer, um, I don't feel like I was going to get much yeses. And I didn't in, in the beginning. In fact, you know, I called a lot of people and I got to talk to a lot of people. And again, it's like, I'll keep your contact information. Thanks so much for calling. And uh, it's it's very worrisome because you hear that over and over. And that that's a demon too for you. Um, you start playing that card in your head, like, you know, I am, I'm not good at this. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, or so. how many millions of calls I'm going to have to make before I happen to align the stars yes. and have, you know, a blue moon moment where someone just happens to have a, a lender that fumbled a deal and they just so happen to be right. open. You know, how many, uh, kernels of gravel I'm going to have to sift through to finally find that one little gold nugget. And am I even going to be able to stay in business long enough to survive to that point? Right. And how many dollars am I going to chew up in my savings in the meantime? And all these yeah. fears, right? right? So it's, uh, it, it's definitely a, a dark night of the soul when you have that as your daily experience, you know, living in, uh, you know, I'll keep your name on file prison. <laughs> Yeah. You know, that does not pay that does not pay the bills. It it tends not to bode well. And frankly, that's another yeah. big reason why people hire us because they realize that there's gotta be a better way. There's gotta be yeah. a better way than cold calling the same 40 freaking realtors every Monday. There's gotta be a better way than using the gardening trowel to build the, the hole for the foundation for the skyscraper when there's something called an excavator, right? There's gotta be yeah. a better way. Yes. Yeah. So, so you knew you had to win. Failure was not an option. You knew that cold calling wasn't panning out. You've been there, done that, got the scars to prove it. You had countless hours, blood, sweat, and tears, a whole lot of squeezing of the fruit, not a whole lot of juice coming out. You're realizing, you know, doing the same old thing over and over is not going to produce a new result. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And you're intelligent enough to know that that's not going to go so well heading to the gunfight with a butter knife. It's time to roll out the tanks and yeah. get yourself equipped to win. So before you, you know, when, when it came to uh, joining us, you, you hopped on a breakthrough call with us. We had a real talk conversation about what's at stake if you continue on the trajectory you're on. And that we was all, eye opening. 
Yeah, and it's not really about anything other than just shining the light of truth on your current trajectory, getting the facts about your your current statistics and pushing that out in the future. And, uh, you know, obviously not comfortable, but at the same time, also very much empowering because we can't change our reality until we face our reality. As Jesus once said, you know, the truth shall set you free, but I'll, as I'll add to it, it'll probably piss you off first, right? The truth <laughs> yeah. will set you free, but at first it's probably gonna piss you right off. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a, you know, inconvenient truth, if you will, in terms of, you know, getting real with the current trajectory, but we also got you connected, heart connected to where you wanna be and the kind of life you can create if you can bring out the tank instead of the butter right. knife gunfight and be equipped to win and really start crushing it and take the shortest path to the cash instead of doing it the hard way. And so, you know, here you are now about to make a bold, intelligent investment in yourself because you realize it's going to be a lot more expensive doing it the hard way, burning and churning through time, energy and money, going nowhere, spinning your wheels, banging your head against the wall than it is to learn from an expert and just go straight to what works. Right. And you realize, hey, I can either grind up the 20 story staircase with a 50 pound rucksack on my back and you know bust my buns doing it the hard way going nowhere or i can just press the p button on the elevator for prosperity for penthouse yeah go straight to making top producer money right from the get-go but nonetheless there's still some fear around what it's going to take you know it's still an investment in sure. yourself it's still you know saying hey i'm in it to win it and uh you know, this is, there's no guarantees. The only guarantee in life is death and taxes. Everything else is a sales pitch. So let's get yeah. real. You know, right. it's, still, it's still crossing that bridge of fear. So tell us about some of the fears that you felt as you stepped out of your comfort zone and stepped into your commitment to your dream that were there for you before you pulled out, you know, the credit card and said, screw it, let's, screw it, let's do it. Tell us about some of those fears. Yeah, because, you know, I really, you can tell yourself you don't have the money to do it, right? Because uh, my savings was limited and I found a whole lot of reasons why I should keep that in my savings. Um, and then at the same time, I realized I can't afford not to do it um, because that savings will deplete fast if I don't have the tools and the resources to help it grow. And right. so, but I had to talk myself out of being so protective of my money and my savings and my investment to feel like you're investing in your business. You're investing in yourself. You're investing in trying to make that savings grow. But I know, and I'm talking to everybody, we're all, we all feel that way. We all feel like, you know, okay, should I really make this investment? Um, and you should always say to yourself, yes, uh, because you're going to get resources that you didn't have. You're going to spend your wheels trying to read things and you don't know if you're even reading the things that will even help you in your business. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I struggled with whether or not I should make that investment because I do have a young son. I do have bills to pay and all of that pressure. Um, and knowing I wasn't on salary, I chose to, not have any salary go straight commission only. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of pressure and wasn't easy to give my uh, credit card code. <laughs> but the trajectory talk was personally profound um, because I knew if I continued at that pace um, that I wasn't gonna be able to be in business long. Um, and that was a scary proposition, uh, but, uh, yeah. So I needed to do that. I had to do it. Yeah. And it's really very much a defining moment. Are you just merely interested in your freedom, autonomy, independence, living life on your terms, living prosperity and abundance and being able to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, anytime you want? Are you just merely interested in living that kind of abundant life? Or are you defiantly committed Yes. Because the interested, they'll always find an excuse. There's always going to be an obstacle too big. There's always going to be something that pushes them out of their comfort zone too much such that they buckle like cheap lawn furniture and go <laughs> back to their comfort zone. But yes. the committed, they, they'll do whatever it freaking takes. They burn right. their retreat boats. There is no, failure is not an option. It's either win or freaking die. 
That's right. commitment. Interested yeah. in, I'll do it if it's convenient. I'll do it if it's comfortable. But mm -hmm. when you're in it to win it, you do whatever it freaking takes. And that was yeah. you, my dear. And that's one of the reasons why you're seeing such a beautiful, uh, you know, blossoming of breakthroughs in your business as of late because you are willing to pay the price. You're not haggling yes. against the price for success because that is the surest way to failure is when you're pushing back and haggling against the price of success. The committed, they'll do whatever it takes. And truth be told, anytime we are on the precipice, if you will, or on the launching pad of wanting to take a bold, audacious leap into that unknown, but also that, you know, that calling in our heart to achieve more, to be more, to create more out of our life, it forces us out of our comfort zone. And our dream will yes. always be outside of our comfort zone. Right. All that we have right now in our life, our income, what we're used to, our, our normals, our standards, the kind of income we normally make, the kind of lifestyle we normally live, that's all inside of our comfort zone. That's why right. our comfort zone, because that's what we're used to. If we want to double, triple, quadruple our income with freedom, independence, autonomy, obviously that's going to take a bold leap outside of the comfort zone. And anytime you do that, it's called crossing what, what one of my mentors uh, Bob Proctor calls the terror barrier. <laughs> and so that terror barrier is real. And you got you got to be more committed to your dream than your comfort zone if you're going to achieve your dream. Right. Because on the path of your dream is being scared shitless about the fact that what if, what if it doesn't work? What right. if it doesn't pan out? What if I make this bold investment and you know I don't get a return on investment? And the committed, the champions of this world, they flip it on its head and say, what if it does work? What if this is exactly what I need to achieve my dream? What if this is exactly the secret sauce that's going to have me step into my dream like never before? What if this is exactly the tank I need to win the war versus right. going back and doing the same old thing and getting the same old results? So I highlight that to, to have you know, a highlight on your embodiment of that mindset, because I think if people don't understand the concept of the terror barrier, they're going to let the single biggest dream stealer, and that is their fear, hold right. them back from their dream. Yeah. So it's really, really cool to see you really step into that defiant resolve, say, screw it, let's do it. Yes. And then here we are now, four months later, approximately. And, uh, you know, you, 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 you got a new zip code. It's called Planet Prosper, Struggle City. Yeah. And you've been living now on P P Planet Prosper for about three and a half, four months. Tell us about uh, some of the initial things we got you to be doing or the initial kind of bold, audacious strategy we got you enacting in your business that was like, really, Dorn, you really think that's going to work? Or like, <laughs> Seriously, that's kind of uncomfortable, Doran. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if it's really, but you've already invested in yourself. So here you are now taking the leap. Tell us about some of the things that maybe you had, if you're really honest, uh, some skepticism around it, uh, but then on the other side, some significant breakthroughs. Speak about some yeah. of those uh, skeptical moments, if you will. You know, and I think so many of us, we don't know what these things are called. Like, we don't know it's fear. We just know we don't like doing something or, you know, um, or that doesn't feel really good. And I don't want to do that again. But we we haven't ever really looked at what it is that's holding us back. Um, and just as much of anything as part of this whole, uh, you know, process that we've gone through is just learning how to shut off those noises that make you doubt yourself. Um, and, you know, it's a work in progress, right? Every day I work on that. Um, and you're going to have something that happens and you're going to go, you're going to retreat again into that fear mode. And you, but now you know what it is. You identify it and you're like, no, I'm not going to be trapped in that kind of mindset. I'm not going to be trapped in that type of thinking. I'm a winner and I'm going to do what winners do. You know, I'm going to tackle this problem head on. It's not going to put me in a defeatist mode. It's going to put me in a champion mode. But I definitely think, you know, it's learning that strategy because before when somebody would, you know, choose a different rate and go with somebody else, I was bummed for like two or three days. I mean, you know, that was income I was counting on and you right. just took it. 
Um, and something that you said too just really helped me. And it's we spend so much time working in our business that we don't focus much on working on our business and making it grow and making it be more profitable. And um, and I found myself that's all I was doing. You know, I had to be on by this phone all the time because somebody was going to text me, somebody was going to call me. And I had right. to answer it immediately. And all I would do is just be in crisis mode all day, you know, because I had to get that loan closed because I was so dependent on that income. And I was focused on, you know, uh, kind of the transactions. I wasn't focused on where I wanted to be, where I wanted my company or myself to be financially and where I want my mindset to be. I was just looking for that next transaction. Um, and it's, it's a hamster um, on a little wheel that you don't want to be on. And so all of the Q and a calls that we've done have just really built more of a self-confident Debbie Knight, um, where I'm more resolved to tackle my day. And yes, the routine has got to be there. And there are going to be days you're going to feel like making those three client calls, those three realtor calls, and there's going to be days you don't, and you're going to do it anyway. Um, and once you're done, you feel like I've been productive today. So if today goes in the shitter later. <laughs> I know I accomplished something this morning. And uh, so, yeah, so it's embodying all the tools and I'm still an evolution in process. I told you earlier, I continue to go back and listen to the modules because um, that continues to motivate me to be better. And I might've forgotten something that I told you I didn't implement. And some of it was the do not disturbs on my phone, turn off the notifications, you know, keep the distractions at a minimum when I'm in my power hour working on my business, because we all get distracted. If you hear a ding on your phone, you're going to look and that's just going to sidetrack you. Um, but it's learning those things. Yeah. Um, and I really thought I was doing my client a favor by being that available, if that makes sense, by being yeah. where I could answer a text in a minute. Um, but I was doing myself a disservice. And as long as you make sure your clients know when you're available, how they can get in touch with you, um, you're going to be fine because you're going to do right by them. So it was prioritizing my time. And that's hard for me. Cause I've been a mother, a single mother. And so my son, yeah. you know, I've always been last. And so when you're telling me invest in me and make me a priority, you know, that was kind of hard in the beginning. So uh, it's a shift in mindset for sure. But I can only imagine. Sure. And yeah. I'm sure there's no other moms who can relate, right? Because you're no. used to yourself first, you're used to pampering yourself and treating yourself to the oh, spa yeah. and making sure that your tank is full so that you can, you know, be a overflowing fountain of blessing to others, right? Because that's just a first re knee jerk reaction, innate inclination for moms, right? Just to yeah. put the breath first, right? Yeah. Nah, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. And so there's a lot of people I know that can relate to uh, to that experience. Right. And you've spoken to, to mindset, you've spoken to working the importance of working on your business, not just in your business. You've spoken to the importance of feel the fear, do it anyways. You've spoken mm -hmm. to the importance of uh, hour of power. Uh, there's a lot there that we could unpack. If we had time, we could certainly unpack more. But the other thing I wanted to just highlight is, you know, before you were doing the cold calling, the realtors, then you shifted your zip code from Struggle City to Planet Prosper. Tell us about, you know, the skeptical try you did in that respect. Because obviously we had a total different paradigm in terms of who you're targeting as realtors, how you're targeting them, how you're attracting them. Speak to maybe a little of the uh, real honest skepticism you may have had there in terms of like, Dorn, do you really think this is going to work? And then tell yeah. us about some of the results you got on the other side of, of doing it and being coachable and just saying, hey, I ponied up the dough and now it's time to go. Right. I will tell you that first one uh, probably didn't go as I would have liked to have done. Um, I was so nervous and fumbling through the questions. You do have to rehearse. Um, and so, but what I got back out of it is when I went back in front of this realtor with my show and tell plan, when I said, here's what we can do together. Here's how we're going to 
grow your business, my business. I felt so much more confident. It was just in that first uncover meeting that, you know, I was kind of fumbling a little bit, but that was a, a great segue into making sure my next one was more planned. I found out a lot more about um, the realtor, uh, try to find a lot more about their listings and uh, whether they were uh, more of a uh, seller or buyer's realtor. So I try to do more homework, um, you know, that snooping or stalking or whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, so the next one, you know, went much better. Um, and I mentioned to you, it was kind of hard to keep this one on track because he's adoring Aldana when he talks. So he's like, oh. so I was right, like, stop him. Come and get a mug, right? Get a mug on. <laughs> and so he was very talkative about his business. And, you know, I kept trying to bring him back. Um, but the energy was there. Uh, the synergy between us was there. Um, and it was really, you know, profound when we really started collaborating. We collaborate really, really well um, because I look at it, too, as their strengths, weaknesses, my strengths, weaknesses. And he's going he's got that personality. He's not going to meet a stranger. Um, he's going to grow his business because of that personality. But he's going to not be the person to mine that database. So he's leaving a lot on the table that both of us can mine together and create a lot more opportunities for a lot less work um, because he's having to dial, you know, get that personality on the phone or, you know, so there's a lot we can do together. And when he started seeing that, the power of the database, um, how do we mine that database? How do we use your um, past clients as referral sources? You know, how do we use your open house contacts as being future potential buyers and you know let's really you know start honing the business out of this um and and keep the hustle work down because we're gonna really be proactive at mining that database yeah what you're really speaking to deb is the change in paradigm from just being an average joe lo being a lone leech you know <laughs> great rates great service throw me a bone type of paradigm versus hey i'm not a mortgage gal i'm not a mortgage hawker that right. certainly is one of the components of what I do, but I'm really a irreplaceable, indispensable marketing partner if you qualify to be right. one of my VIP partners. And so no longer are you being interviewed by them, they're being interviewed by you, right? Yeah. So right. You flip the script so that they need you more than you need them. It's a total different dynamic. It's a total energetic shift. It's a complete 180 compared to how most mortgage pros you know, handle the courting and attracting of realtors. They, they don't actually do the attracting. They do repelling and prospecting and chasing. That's not attracting. That's a total right. different mindset. So tell us about obviously a, a total shift in you being able to have a big stack of awesome that you bring to the table for your VIP partners and to be able to be that asset to them such that they stick to you like super glue and make you their exclusive partner. Tell us about the shift real quick, going from the, you know, caveman style marketing from the dark ages, cold calling to <laughs> a whole different uh, method that uses automation and technology. Cause after all, we are in the 21st century. We might as well use it. There's no merit badges at the bank for digging the foundation for your skyscraper with a gardening trowel when there's something right. going next to you. that's called doing it the freaking hard way. Right. There's no, you know, there's no brownie points at the bank for more toil for your effort, right? So, uh, yeah, tell us uh, very quickly about that. Did you have any skepticism around our uh, our realtor attraction, attraction system? And how was it for you not having the cold call anymore? I'm, I bet you miss yeah. it, don't you? Yeah, I do. Um, of <laughs> course, uh, I was skeptical, right? So first, I didn't believe you when you said that the realtor uh, needs me more than I need them. <laughs> so first of all, I had to change that mindset um, because we all go in it. We've been told you've got to get your realtors. You've got to get your realtors. you got to get realtors. And so we all go in it with the mindset that we're dependent on them. But when you talk to them, you'd be amazed at how many have never gotten a referral from their loan officer that they refer business to, that they don't have regular conversations with their loan officer, um, that they're really 
just in their Rolodex. There's not a collaborative working relationship there. Um, and so that was the first aha moment. Um, I'm like, well, Doran's on to something because he always said <laughs> that they need us more than we need them. Um, and I think that that's just so true because they're not getting anything um, uh, unless they're being proactive and working with you. So they definitely need us more than we need them. And I didn't think that was true in the beginning, but it definitely is because we do have the tools to help them mine that database. We do have the tools that um, are campaigns that are already built. I mean, you've made it so easy. It's like a click and go, click and go. Um, so, you know, but one of the things that you've always suggested too is that that work that takes so much time and effort and it's still important doesn't have to be done by me. Uh, it can be outsourced. You know, I need to focus my time on productive things for me. Um, and so it's just all about managing that time and making those uh, connections and still have somebody working with me that's going to get out those letters, it's going to uh, start up that open house, you know, uh, list and all that stuff. And so, uh, again, you made this super easy. It's, it's um, again, building that plan, but most importantly, you got to work it. And so, yeah, yeah it's and, been a blessing. And people can go out there and they can try and rebuild the, uh, the vehicle from scratch, you know, spark plugs and axles and tires and wheels and nuts and bolts and steering wheels. And they can try to rebuild it from scratch if they want, or they can just stick, stick the key in the ignition and drive away. That's you right. know, people have the choice, but obviously a big reason why people hire us mm -hmm. and certainly a big reason why you did Debbie is you didn't have time to be messing around doing it the hard way, trying to reinvent the wheel. And so it's really not just about saving yourself the time, the energy, the money, but it's about getting straight to what works without doubting or wondering in fear, where is that next deal is going to come from? So here you are now, three and a half, four months in, living on Planet Prosper. Tell us how is life different now? I know that uh, you've had some significant increases in production, which is why we're featuring you on the podcast, as far as I recollect. Mm -hmm. You know, when we started, you were doing about eight to 10 deals a month on average. Your trajectory was about 150 for the year. So, yeah. you know, somewhere around 12 G's a month, something like that, which, you know, most people would say, hey, that's pretty good. I'd like to make that much money. Right. But good is always the mortal enemy of great. And if you're content with good, chances are you're never going to stretch out of your comfort zone for great. And you're committed right. to great, not just good. So right. tell us, you know, you started there and then uh, tell us where, where are you now and what kind of breakthroughs have unfolded over the last three months? Yeah. Ago? So uh, definitely one of the things that I've done is I've changed my percentage of purchase and refis. I'm not where I want to be. I'm not at that 85, 15 level, um, but I'm getting a good solid four to five purchase a month. Um, and that sure beats the one or zero. Um, and uh, I have a lot of pre-approvals in my pipeline. So they're looking for homes, um, right. which that feels good too, because I'm building that pre-approval pipeline. And that's another thing that we bring to the realtor table. You know, don't go shop for homes. This is certainly a seller's market. So the inventory is going to go quickly. Your buyers need to be pre-approved and I can do that for you. And I'm going to give you this letter and you're going to take it around. And when y'all want a house, you're going to be able to buy it immediately. So the great thing is I have right now, probably six to seven pre-approvals waiting to buy a house in my pipeline. Um, so all of that feels, you know, amazing and so much better. And that was really the thing that I told you I wanted to focus on the most um, was getting that purchase up. So I'm looking to be on a trajectory of 250,000 plus this year. Um, I've grown from at least eight to 10 to, I do 20 deals now a month. Um, the one thing that I told you that I want to get up is my dollar per deal. Um, I've become known as kind of uh, one of the investor property um, LOs. So I'm getting multiple deals per borrower. So on average, um, I'm probably getting at least two to three deals per borrower. But some of those second and third homes aren't like the first home. So I'm earning 3000 or more on that first deal and less on the other two properties, but um, still doing what I need to do, still focused on um, doing my realtor contacts, my client calls, and 
since I've only been in the business eight months, um, you know, I'm still building that wealth of that database. So uh, having those open houses with my realtors has been helpful because I take those names back and move them into my database too, um, so that I can continue to drip on those customers because I know they're looking. So uh, those are just some of the things that have really helped me in the last three to four months. Um, like I told you, I'm still an evolution. You know, this, this is going to be um, something that I'm going to do daily. I'm going to work in my business, work on my business every day and continue to focus on the things um, that's going to help me grow. And, and you also said to kind of, <clears throat> you know, focus on, you know, the why um, focus, um, you know, we focus so much on how I'm going to get there. Focus on why you want to get there. Focus on what you want to become um, and start living in that mindset. Maybe not financially, but start living um, in that mindset of being a player in a $250,000 annual salary level. Because then that's not my goal. You know, my goal is even larger than that. Um, but, you know, um, to be on a trajectory for 150000 to have now gone to two fifty in just a matter of months is mind boggling. I would not have thought that possible for myself. Yeah, I'm sure it was just a coincidence, right? <laughs> just a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, just, just dumb luck, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, luck stands for L-U-C-K, laboring under correct knowledge. That's right. It ain't by accident, it, it happened by design. And I often say we can have more because we can become more. And I've seen a tremendous growth in you as an individual, as a leader, as a self-starter, as someone who's stepping into the best version of yourself. I've seen you courageously make bold moves in so many respects, showing up, celebrating your wins and victories on a weekly basis on our Q&A calls, right. taking massive action, being coachable, emptying your cup so we can fill it with your dream. I mean, you've been in it to win it, showing up like a freaking rock star champion that I know you know yourself to be and that you were stretching yourself out of your comfort zone each and every day to press into that best version of yourself. And it certainly has been very evident. So, I mean, yeah, it is absolutely worthy of celebration and praise. And uh, it's nothing short of extraordinary, the dust on top of extraordinary. That's my, my cat. Right? Yeah, there you go. Everybody wants a little dead. I don't blame <laughs> them, right? Everybody wants some dead. Who there we go. Them, yeah. <laughs> and so, and so to, yeah, to go from, you know, 10 to 12 G's a month to 20 plus G's a month in a matter of three months is a freaking yep. awesome start. And you're just getting warmed up, baby. We haven't seen yeah. nothing yet. You're just on the scratch of the scratch <laughs> of the scratch of the surface at this point. So what are you most, as we wrap up this call, what are you most excited about now, three months into living on Planet Prosper, increasing your purchase production by over 40%, increasing your monthly income by at least eight, nine, 10 G's a month. What are you most excited about? I know you're excited about a lot, but if you had to choose one thing, what are you most excited about? I'm excited about these realtor relationships because they're really becoming relationships where they call me and they ask me about different programs and uh, for, you know, first time home buyers. And uh, I know that it's working, that collaboration has started. So I'm really excited because I, I can see how that's going to help me grow my business. Um, and it makes me want to grow my partners. Um, so I know there's a lot more um, work to be done there and to show more realtors what we can do to, together. Um, so I'm real excited about that. And, and yes, I'm going to squeeze every dime out of you in this program. <laughs> <laughs> Work me and squeeze me for all I'm worth, my dear. That's, I'm right. your partner too, and that's what I'm here for. That's and right. and now, now that you've ascended to that next level in uh, the Champions Club circle, I know that, you know, mm -hmm. you're absolutely equipped to win like never before. And it's such a delight and a joy to serve you. You know, I honor you for uh, your commitment to being the best mom you can be for your son and not just, you know, have dreams, but to show your son what it looks like to also make them real and to have that, right. be, you know, the legacy you leave to the next generation. Love your energy, love your, your passion mm -hmm. for the business and to serve others. And you live that line from good old Ziggy Ziggler where he said, 
you can have anything you want in your life if you can just help enough other people get what they want in their life. And you're absolutely living it. You've got a heart to serve, your heart connected to purpose to make a difference in people's lives. People feel it. That's why they want to be, you know, anchored and committed to working with Debbie Knight because they feel your heart to serve them. Right. So I honor you for that. And I honor you for just being willing to empty your cup so we can fill it with your dream. You're just getting warmed up, my dear. Buckle up. It's only going to get better from here. Ready to go. I love it. I love it. And so those of you who are listening, watching this right now, inspired by Debbie's story, and you realize, hey, I can see myself in Debbie's story. I've been, I'm doing it the hard way. I, I'm sitting on that one-legged stool in a precarious position with 50, 60, 70% plus refi business. I'm worried about what's going to happen when rates go up. I'm worrying when, where my next, next deal is going to come from. When a deal goes sideways, I'm freaking out because I've already you know, spent that money. And so you're realizing that you need to build stability through diversification and there's some room to grow there. You're realizing that you're doing it the caveman style method, cold calling realtors. And you, you know in your heart there's got to be a better way. And you're realizing that you've got to make some pivots in this pandemic uh, shift that we're in right now. The things that worked even a year ago, they just don't work anymore, let alone 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. So if you're on this uh, ask and you're in this place where you want to double or triple your income. You want to increase your income by at least $100,000 or more, but you want to start working smarter, not harder. You want to start being like a hot knife through butter where you can just get straight to the outcomes of attracting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive without having to bang your head against the wall and grovel and chase and beg and bribe and all that nonsense. If that's you and you've been inspired by Debbie's story, then I invite you to start where Debbie started, which is, booking a call with us where we will lift up the hood on your business and just see where you, you know, where you at now. Let's get real about where you're at now because you can't change your reality until you face your reality. So let's not bring judgment to it, but let's just get real with where you're at now. And then also let's look at where you want to be. What would your dream life look like? What would get you doing the happy dance, the mm -hmm. freedom dance. And then if we can help you bridge that gap, by all means, we'll show you how to do that. And if not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. Frankly, we, uh, for whatever reason, and there's a, a multitude of reasons, we disqualify about 20% of the people we talk to because they're just not the right fit or they're just not in the right season or they're just not the kind of person we can help. So this is not a sales call. This is a discovery call to see if we have the right synergy, the right fit to help you. And so if you'd like to take advantage of that, and if you would like to be able to, you know, just explore what we can do for you, I promise you it'll be the most clarity inducing call you've had in a very, very long time, perhaps ever. Yeah. If I can be as bold as to say that either way, you'll leave the call with massive clarity, massive value and chances are we'll have some fun. So if you'd like to take advantage of that, go ahead and book the call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Just the way you see it on the screen there, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Book a call. We'll have a conversation, see what we can do to help you. All right, y'all. So go ahead and do that now. And uh, Debbie, I just want to honor you again. I appreciate you so much for who you are and uh, the light that you shine. Just keep shining your light bright, my dear. It's only going to get better from here. So blessed to be on the journey with you. So blessed to be in your corner, to serve you, to uh, this tremendous breakthrough that I don't want to diminish, but frankly, give us another 12 months. It's going to look yeah. like cosplay compared to what you're doing now. So get ready, my dear. And I just really thank you for your time to share your story with us today. Thank you. All right. Well, guys, you just listened to Doran Aldana and the one and only Debbie Knight. And you just learned how she literally took her purchase production by 40% increase and she's just getting warmed up. She was able to do that in just three months. So if you'd like to take advantage of the secret sauce and help her to do that, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. I trust you've got some value, some inspiration, motivation, and education from our time together today. And uh, if indeed you're ready to take that next step, you know how to reach us, y'all. So thanks for tuning in. This is the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And again, we're here in your corner on your team. If you're ready to step up, the door is always open. So thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Debbie, for blessing us with your story. And we will see all of you again very, very soon. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great day. Have a great week. Bring massive action to your life. Bring massive positive energy to that action. 
chances are you will get massive results. So we'll talk to you again soon, all, all of you beautiful people. Be blessed and we'll talk soon. Peace.